let's work a few problems involving an ellipse. Remember from a previous video, we talked about the equations of ellipses. If the largest denominator is under the x squared term, it is a horizontal ellipse. If the largest number is underneath the y squared term, it is a vertical ellipse. Let's try this problem. An ellipse with the center at 0, 0 has a height of 10 units and a width of 18 units. Find its equation. Well, the larger axis is 18. So that will be my major axis, which is equal to 2 times a. So 2a will equal 18, which means a equals 9. From the center of my ellipse, I will go to the right 9, and I will go to the left 9. The minor axis has a height of 10, and the minor axis is 2 times b. So 2b will equal 10, b will equal 5. I will go up 5, and I will go down 5. This is my ellipse. Now we need to find the equation of this ellipse. So we have found a to be 9 and b to be 5. This is a horizontal ellipse, so I will put my largest number under the x squared term. The equation of this ellipse is x squared over 81 plus y squared over 25 equals 1. Let's try another one. The equation of an ellipse is 16x squared plus 9y squared equals 144. Find the coordinates of the foci and the lengths of the major and minor axes. Draw the graph. To begin, I need to put this in the standard form of an equation for an ellipse. I need the constant to equal 1. So I will divide both sides, or each term, by 144. 16 over 144 can be reduced. 16 will go into both of those. I will get x squared over 9. When I reduce 9 over 144, that will be 1 16th. So I will simply get y squared over 16. And 144 over 144 is just 1. This is the standard equation of my ellipse. Now notice that the largest denominator is under the y squared term. This will be a vertical ellipse. So a squared will equal 16, which means a equals 4. Now I know you may think a is equal to plus or minus 4, but remember we are referring to distance. b squared will equal 9. So b will equal 3. Let's begin graphing this ellipse. Now under my y squared term, I have 16. And the square root of 16 is 4. So from 0, 0, I will go up 4, and I will go down 4. Under the x squared term is 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. So from the center, I will go to the right 3, and I will go to the left 3. What about my foci? Remember from the previous video, we learned that we could find the foci by c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared. So c squared is going to equal 16 minus 9, which means c squared is equal to 7, and c will equal the square root of 7. Now how do we graph that? Well, the square root of 7 is approximately 2.6. And remember, the foci is on the major axis. And this is a vertical ellipse. I will go up 2.6, and I will go down 2.6. So we have graphed this ellipse. It was a vertical ellipse because the largest denominator was under the y squared term. Our vertices are 0, 4 and 0, negative 4. The covertices were 3, 0 and negative 3, 0. 
and then we also found the foci. The foci are located on the major axis. Once I found that C was approximately 2.6, from the center I went up 2.6 and down 2.6. The major axis is 2 times A, which is 2 times 4, which will be 8. The minor axis is 2 times B. B is the square root of 9, which is 3. And 2 times 3 is 6. The minor axis is 6. Let's try one more problem. Write an equation of the ellipse with the given characteristics in center at 0, 0. So they want our ellipse to have a vertex at 7, 0 and a covertex at 0, 5. So our ellipse should look something like this. The center's at 0, 0. I have a vertex at 7, 0. I have a covertex at 0, 5. It looks like this is a horizontal ellipse because my major axis is horizontal. So the a squared will be in the denominator of the x squared term. I should also notice that a is equal to 7 and b is equal to 5. So the equation of this ellipse will be x squared over 49 plus y squared over 25 equals 1.